And welcome back to News On. I'm Miranda Khan. Again, just want to remind all of you that are just tuning in now, we are still awaiting that press briefing to give us the very latest information. This after two explosions occurred in Afghanistan. There were reports of U.S. Marines being injured, as well as Kabul uh, Hospital reporting that at least 30 people have been injured. We'll, of course, bring that to you live as soon as it happens. Meanwhile, I want to welcome back our panel joining us once again, Robin Biro and Melissa Armo. Thank you both for sticking around. So right before the break, uh, we were talking about this piece that was published by the New York Magazine's intelligencer complaining that the media actually manufactured President Joe Biden's politico fiasco when it comes to uh, his handling of this withdrawal from Afghanistan. The media. Um, Melissa. Did the media just manufacture this? I think very often the media sometimes does create drama, maybe where there isn't, or cover up for dramatic things that they don't want to be played out. But I will say this, in real everyday life right now, people are paying attention to what's going on. I think that the administration is hoping that people are going to forget about this in a couple of days or a couple of weeks. But now that you've had two bombs go off, people are not going to forget about this. And also, I will point out, the market is falling today and fell drastically immediately when it came out of the news that there was a bomb and that Americans were hurt. So if people have 401ks, if they have investments in the markets, they sure as heck are going to pay attention to what's going on. I don't think people are going to forget about this. And I, I really, I hate to say this, but in the next couple of days, we could see more attacks like this, particularly because now people are distracted by this by what's happening, trying to get the wounded out, trying to help the people, trying to regroup the Americans that are there, we may see more attacks and we may not see them coming. I don't think that people are prepared for what is about to happen next. And God forbid we would continue and get into some kind of war with Afghanistan. I always say the market's bullish, the market's been running up. Barring a world war, the market will probably continue the uptrend. It's been holding up pretty good. But when something like this happens, it scares everybody, it scares the market, it panics people. We don't want to get into a drawn out conflict in there, especially when we were just trying to leave. Robin. To Melissa's point, yes, the media, uh, it's about making ratings. Uh, so we do in the media tend to expo exploit the drama, but this is a serious dramatic incident. Uh, people are dead, not just Americans, British people are some of our Afghan allies that were helping us fight this war. There are over 80,000 people that we were trying to extricate uh, safely, people who assisted us, who assisted me when I was fighting overseas. Uh, so this is this is an international uh, a, a conflict here. Yeah. Uh, this will have international attention on it, and it's, it's serious and very grim. The media has a response responsibility to report on it. Yeah, I, you know, and, and having worked in the media my entire adult life, I, I don't disagree with some of the comments that, that you both have made. However, you can't manufacture suicide bombers going off, people falling from planes, people being beaten. People can see the video from themselves and judge. And as you mentioned, Robin, you have some of your military family members, I like to call them family members, basically, because yeah. they are family. Um, that fought alongside you, still there. They're telling you what's going on the ground. And, it, and it's not peaceful. We, we know that right now. And it's estimated about 100,000 people now have been evacuated and that this is reportedly the biggest evacuation that has ever taken place in U.S. history. I do want to kind of go to some other news, but real quickly, Robin, uh, again, that press briefing is scheduled to begin any moment. What do you anticipate to hear out of that press briefing today. We better hear some plans of action. Uh, we can't leave this up to the Taliban. Like I said, they've delegated uh, security force detail at this airport to forces as associated with Al Qaeda. That's not going to cut it. We have American. We've got to. What I want to hear are how we're going to protect American troops first and foremost, and then all right. of the other people. It's eighty thousand other other people associated with us. I don't yeah. have high hopes that they're going to say anything different today, Miranda, than they've been saying every single day for the last week. Every single day they get on and they say the same thing, and nothing ever happens. And now there's been two bombs that have gone off. And for them to think that people are going to forget about this, 9-11 is coming up. 9-11 is less right. than three weeks away. People are not going to forget about this. No one, everyone that's an American knows what happened 20 years ago. Yeah, and that's actually the, the focus of the question that we're asking our, our viewers is whether or not they, they think a, an attack is likely either before 
or in the days following uh, 9-11. Robin, real quickly, I, I've been kind of asking this question every single day, but I don't think I've asked it to you. And since you served in the Afghan war, a lot of people are saying none of this withdrawal makes sense, right? You got France upset, you've got uh, Britain upset. Pretty much this exit strategy has angered everyone. There are very few people saying, yeah, this, this, this was a good move on the Biden administration's part. So that leads me to believe then why? Is there something possibly that the Biden administration knows that they are not telling the American people that maybe there's not a threat over there, but possibly a threat over here? And that is what's being used against us. And that's why there's this big push to get everybody out by that deadline. Thank you for saying that. Uh, that has been my concern as well. Uh, of course, uh, presidents get the, the, the most detailed secret uh, classified information. Uh, we're not privy to that. Even when I had two levels above top secret security clearance, I didn't know information like that. There are absolutely threats here right now today. Uh, there are things that, that none of us will be privy to. So protecting all of Americans here at home is, of course, our first, first and foremost responsibility. But we've got to protect our men and women in uniform overseas also and get them home safely. It's of paramount importance. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's just, you know, it's been bothering me uh, the past several days uh, just listening to everyone on the left and on the right saying none of this makes sense. So that's why it leads me to believe that there's something we just don't know about. Um, but again, that's just a theory. Uh, we'll continue uh, to monitor the situation to get on that press briefing and bring you the very latest. And the few minutes that we have remaining, though, um, this just caught our attention. So we're going to definitely switch gears here and talk about COVID. So a Washington state high school is now being accused of forcing high school students to wear taxpayer funded ankle monitors to track COVID outbreaks. Now under the rule, the students either have to wear the monitors or risk not being able to participate in sports. The trace tag monitors, as they're being called, go off if the person wearing it gets too close to someone else. The tracing monitor also collects contact tracing information in case the wearer comes down with COVID-19. The high school has stopped using the devices until it gets further input, though, from the community along with the board approval. Um, you know, we can, <laughs> been a lot of debate over whether or not to wear a mask, whether or not to get vaccinated, but I gotta say, uh, Melissa, this is a little different with the ankle bracelets. <laughs> They're acting like these people have to be tracked like they're criminals. Criminals wear ankle bracelets. I mean, this is so absurd. I've never heard of anything so absurd. It's almost like the point where you get up in the morning, you hear news stories like this in different different states or different cities, just like here in New York, where you have the vaccine mandate, which is absolutely absurd and is already hurting businesses. We cannot continue to go down these crazy paths. We're going to have to live with this virus forever. People can make up their own mind to wear masks or not. People can make up their own mind to get vaccinated. We can't put our children through any more of this. This is nuts. Robin, uh, last uh, 40 seconds to you on this topic. Can you imagine your sons wearing these? <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, and, and it's sort of redundant because most all high school age students have phones. All of our phones currently have uh, contact notifications right here and, and contact tracing as an option, they can use that. I don't know, I don't understand. It doesn't make sense to me why we would need ankle bracelets to do the same. Not to mention, it seems like it'd be kind of hard to kick the ball. Let's just say if you're on a field wearing that <laughs> right. ankle bracelet, I, I'm just trying to visualize how this is gonna work. I'm already athletically challenged as it is. I wouldn't need something else to hamper my efforts. But uh, as always, uh, Robin and Melissa, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right, there is so much more news to come here on this edition of News On. Uh, we're going to be talking about the border news, uh, the number of people that have been arrested and their criminal background, quite alarming. We're going to give you the very latest on that when News On returns. <laughs>